Hi everyone, so we are here for our final talk of this vlog. Um, the talk will be given by Christopher Beto. Hi Chris. Hello. Um, Chris is an analyst focusing on mapillary and open street map on the spatial computing team at Facebook Reality Labs. He has worked on the OSM, GIS and map, map data products at mapillary since 2016. He codes in Python, SQL, and JavaScript and enjoys traveling widely while editing OpenStreetMap. So now I will leave you to your talk and we'll meet later for the questions. Sounds good? Great. Thank you, Karina. All right. So my name is Christopher Beto and I'm coming to talk about the future of pedestrian mapping on behalf of Facebook Reality Labs. We're going to take a look at some of the new and upcoming features for uh, the map with AI tools, include Rapid. So a quick agenda. Uh, we'll look again at what map with AI is in case you aren't familiar, need a review. Then we'll take a look at uh, some new things that are coming soon. We'll do a quick tutorial on how to use those new things. We'll do a tech dive to kind of see how it's made. And then I'll take questions at the end. So first, starting with Rapid, uh, this may look familiar to many viewers. The idea of Rapid is really to take detections from satellite and aerial imagery, find roads uh, that are generally missing from the map, predict from what's in the imagery where a road should be, suggest it to the user, and then the user's job is to validate it or invalidate it, add it to the map, and make any adjustments as necessary to make sure it fits in with the existing data. So the best example of this is actually in the Rapid tool. This is alongside the JOSM desktop editor. Uh, but this one in the web browser allows you to see these magenta colored roads on the map. It allows you to choose to use or ignore it, as you can see, as well as compare it against the background layers. Uh, so usually the satellite layer that helps uh, show the context around that detected road. Uh, you also may be familiar with the Microsoft Buildings data set. Uh, so that's working very similar, just with polygons. And again, these are extracted from the satellite or aerial imagery, and it tends to show the predicted building footprints and have the user validate that to make sure it mixes in well with existing data or otherwise doesn't conflict with uh, each other or has valid shapes and so on. And if you click when you're in the web browser, that rapid assist button at top center, you'll see that set of building layers and road layers that are available to you. And you can check or uncheck them, change the color, as well as do an add manage data sets for something external. Uh, lately, we also started collaborating with Esri to bring in the ArcGIS data sets. So many of these are uh, open data provided by cities, by the counties, other, other government entities, uh, again, in the same line, sometimes of being roads, sometimes it's for buildings, uh, addresses, various pieces of data that can also enrich OpenStreetMap, uh, assuming the user is able to go through and validate it and apply their own knowledge and analysis. And on top of this, of course, we have Mapillary inside the, uh, the web editors for OpenStreetMap. So here you'll see the Mapillary viewer window at the bottom left. You can see the green on the map showing the coverage. Each dot is an image captured by a Mapillary user. And you can compare these to things like the roads, find things in the images. Here you see a traffic light, a crosswalk, and the user uh, with no assistance from machine learning can just derive data from these by visually inspecting what's there. Uh, so of course we've been exploring other ways of making mapillary data useful and you'll see that uh, with the traffic sign layer that's available already in the editors you can see things like benches, street lamps, utility poles, uh, but also we want to take it to another level so I'll give you a preview of what we're looking at. Uh, so sometime toward the end of the year, you should see this third option appear. It says Facebook footway suggestions. And what this is going to do is work very similar to Facebook roads in that it will be based on line string geometry. 
and it should be showing the location of predicted sidewalks as well as crosswalks anywhere that Mapillary imagery exists, uh, but also sometimes where open data exists. So taking a closer look here, uh, here's an example of how the sidewalks should appear to the user, uh, one on each side of the road where a Mapillary image suggests that it exists on both sides. And it'll be left there for the user to, again, accept or reject and then analyze for adding to the map. And the same with crosswalks, uh, it'll be symbolized a little differently. So you can see these kind of use the symbology of, of sidewalks with the alternating colors and a solid line for crosswalks. And again, uh, this is a rougher draft of the, the, an early look of the data. So um, we're looking again though at making sure it matches what really should be there on the ground. So you can see that in satellite, uh, but again, use the Mapillary images to confirm. So let's take a little bit deeper of a look here in a tutorial sense. Uh, we're gonna start with just an example area. So here we are uh, somewhere near the city center in Seattle, Washington. So on the west coast of the US and it's a very urban area, quite a bit of mapillary coverage. And so a lot of data was able to be derived in the first run here. And what the algorithm does is um, again, just detects sidewalks in mapillary images and then tries to place those on a map in order to get continuous lines working that would suggest a, a full network of footways. So in order to add a sidewalk, what we would first do is hover on one of the sidewalk lines. And you can see at the bottom of the screen here, it's gonna bring up a preview of some of the images and these are ones that were known to contain that specific sidewalk because its geometry as a line on the map was derived from that image. So it gives you just a quick look at the piece of data you're dealing with and lets you decide if you want to click through and pursue adding it to the map. So as you click on one of the specific images in that film strip, it's going to actually enlarge. And so you can get just a better idea. Um, so you'll see the, the point around the, the center of the screen that has a, a view cone indicating the direction you're facing on the road right there. So you can see sidewalk there on the right side and helps you really just confirm the presence of that footway. And it looks pretty clear there. It's visible, it's continuous. Uh, you can compare it. It's got the trees nearby it, which is in uh, in the autumn in the photo, so we don't have the greenery. And there may be photos from other times of year as well if you, if you click through that helps, again, make sure that it looks like it does from above. So if we choose um, on the left here, use this feature, it's going to convert that into a piece of OpenStreetMap data. So now we have an actual sidewalk line string here. And then you get on the left the typical warning issues that help the user determine what they need to fix before this is really a valid map edit. Uh, so of course we can see it crosses a street uh, that we need to make sure we're doing a proper intersection with, but also there's four more warnings below it. So crossing an alleyway, a marked crosswalk, uh, a pedestrian crossing that already exists. And then it's also disconnected from other roads and paths, which we should be able to improve by adding more sidewalks around it. So addressing those warnings is really important to make sure we're not just accepting the data as is. There's a lot of work to be done after just importing the geometry. So deconflicting it is really that next set of steps and zooming in a bit more. Uh, we can see, for example, we've selected a crosswalk here. It's the one uh, directly south of the traffic lights in the intersection. And again, we get the film strip. So we can see these images are actually uh, located right there on the street. And that last image on the right is going to let us know um, that we're looking at that crosswalk that's before the intersection. While the one directly to the left of it actually seems to be looking at the crosswalk that's after the intersection. So using these images for context, we can know that there's multiple crosswalks in the area appearing in mapillary images, but we can derive which one we're talking about and therefore confirm the presence of it. 
So having that visual guide with the map or images is a really important piece of this. So now that we can see that that crosswalk is indeed there in the photos, as well as in the aerial image, we can choose to use this feature. And then once again, we're going to get the warning messages and do some deconfliction here. So we can see where it crosses those two different road segments of the same street, each going one way. And it's already joined there, it looks like, to the sidewalk. And then there already are crossings as well nearby it. So we'd want to drag those to be nodes in that crosswalk and be the point where it intersects those roads. Then we have a proper geometry set up. So after taking a look at how you're going to do the mapping, uh, a really important part of making sure the user can be confident uh, the starting point of the data is knowing how it's derived. So we'll take a look at how we actually generate this first round of sidewalk and crosswalk data. So it starts with computer vision, and that's something that Mapler is already very well known for. Uh, so we see this scene where every piece of this image has been classified as belonging to some category. and the pixels are then grouped into uh, what are uh, segmentations. So you'll see that magenta color, just like the one on the map. And that's highlighting what parts of this image are actually classified as sidewalk. And it's been smoothed over enough that you have a continuous polygon as well. Um, so you kind of have a clear distinctive line between that sidewalk and then the gray section in the middle of its road. The, the blue sections that are cars that are removed from the scene so they don't end up as data on the map, like some of the surroundings. And overall, what's important here is just knowing the location of the image. It has a geotag, like every image uploaded to Mapillary. And we know the content of it now and exactly which parts of it are, are actually sidewalk. And then we also know the pose of the camera. We know the angle that it's facing, and we know, therefore, that we can relatively determine those sidewalk locations uh, from the longitude, latitude, and the camera angle. So here we are back in Seattle, and we can take a little look at some camera math. So anyone's able to actually calculate this using MathLay data on the API. And that's why I call it kind of the simplest method of predicting sidewalks. So it's, it's kind of the first step that we're looking at and doing this before moving on to maybe some more complicated ways. But we start with the observer location. So that's where the camera is. And we know that angle. So we're facing straight forward toward the intersection, uh, toward those traffic lights that are green. On the right there, we have that segment of sidewalk. Uh, so it's delineated in the image. And we can calculate the centroid of that as a polygon, similar to what we might do with a, a polygon on a map. So once we have the centroid of it, we'll calculate that angle. And so if we know the camera angle, for example, is facing a straight, um, straight kind of west like it is here, then we might predict that it's something like plus um, 75 degrees from that is the angle to the centroid. And that's really important to know because then we're going to form a triangle from kind of a bird's eye view and try to predict where a sidewalk node that would form the line in OpenStreetMap might appear on the map that corresponds with that centroid. So taking a look from above, we'll see here the image location once again, the, the orange and gold view cone there. And we see that red angle that, let's say, would be something like 45, 75 degrees offset from the center of the camera angle. So in order to calculate this node, we'll draw just a ray on the map using something like a 100 meter long uh, distance. And it's gonna extend from the longitude and latitude of the camera out in the direction of the, uh, the centroid of that detection. So in that particular angle, then Using just kind of some averages, uh, especially here looking at Seattle, we see about an eight meter distance from road center line to where a sidewalk center line would be uh, looking at aerial imagery. 
So assuming an eight meter offset from center line to center line there, we jump over that eight meters, then draw another line that's exactly parallel with the road that the current image is on. And again, just extend it out about a hundred meters. So where that purple line, just a parallel segment uh, of the road crosses the red line, that's the ray from camera toward the sidewalk, that's gonna be a sidewalk node. So we have the yellow star there, and suddenly we can start building a sidewalk out of this. So when we jump forward to the next image, we'll just repeat that again, and maybe something like three to five meters ahead, we'll have another node. And we can continue to repeat this all the way down the sequence of images until we run out of images, and then we can move on to another one. And uh, again and again here, we can generate a lot of nodes. And eventually it looks something like this. So instead of having the green mapillary images, which are more toward the center of the road, we get a huge cluster of possible sidewalk nodes. And then the important thing there is to simplify it. So this is where it gets a little more, um, probably a little more boring, really. It's the idea is we're just going to wrap a polygon around all these nodes and then predict a center line through it. And that center line prediction can be kind of the more complicated part, uh, really hard to visualize the way it works. Uh, and also something that we're working on refining in order to make sure we get better uh, consistent center lines that don't have duplicates, and especially around crosswalks where it's a little more um, works under a little different rules than you think the sidewalks might because the crosswalks both intersect roads and are parallel to them. So more improvement on that is on the way, but generally this is the raw data we're looking at and then a simplification of this into lines is the output that we're looking to show in OpenStreetMap. So when using this tool, overall the end goals you're looking at are to add missing footways, including sidewalks and crosswalks to the map. You're also looking to reject the duplicates. And a lot of that is making sure that false positives don't make it through the human in the loop filter, as well as bad geometry. So we may have something that generally represents a crosswalk or sidewalk in kind of the correct area, but it really is part of uh, the user's discretion to make sure that that gets corrected and made into something actually useful and it represents what's on the ground. So that's why these are suggestions and it's great to use them as a starting point. And once they are added to the map with the proper geometry, the next goal is to deconflict this with existing map data and solve those warnings that come up. So we wanna make sure that it's actually improving the map, uh, filling in gaps in the network rather than creating new conflicts, new issues and making the map more confusing. And finally, on a larger scale, the end goal should be to build a pedestrian footway network, um, often in your area. So as a user, if you have no mapillary imagery uh, in your neighborhood, uh, in your city, you can go out, capture that imagery using the mapillary mobile app, using a GoPro, uh, using a 360 degree camera. And then generally you should be able to soon see sidewalk suggestions in that same area derived from your imagery that will help you easily map out that sidewalk and crosswalk and pedestrian footway network in a way that may be really difficult to do working solely from aerial and satellite images uh, or otherwise going out and trying to survey and collect that data uh, on the ground in a way that probably needs some very special tools. So ideally this is the fastest, uh, most accurate and as well as most do-it-yourself community-driven way to map pedestrian footways anywhere in the world. So wrapping up with that, um, I'll take some questions. So generally uh, just focusing here on, on the Map with AI tool as well as Mapillary. And yeah, thank you very much for coming. And I hope that uh, we'll all be able to see the next phase of this soon and get started using it in the next few months. Thank you for your talk. Um, we have some questions already in Venueless. Um, the first one is, have you tested it in countries where, for lack of a better word, poorer pedestrian infrastructure is available? 
So most of the extensive testing has been generally in the Seattle area in the U.S. And the reason for that is because you start with a lot of assumptions like road widths. That's kind of the most important part. However, I have tested the general quality of sidewalk data uh, all around the globe. And there certainly are challenges and it's just at different points in the process. So one of the biggest ones is the challenge in the actual detection algorithms. And I think that's the part that we probably should focus on solving. So if there's some sort of footway that's visibly there, we usually can detect it, but we might struggle in a place where, for example, the footway next to a paved road is actually uh, something that's more close to dirt, earth, or gravel than paved sidewalk. But I know there's also many places where you have tiles. Uh, you may also have tree roots that are underneath a tile and uproot it so it doesn't really look like what an algorithm would detect as a sidewalk. So I've, I've been able to see a lot of those problems. And the idea here is that we won't even be able to suggest a sidewalk in those cases where the algorithm is failing that early. And it raises some questions on how we could find other ways for users to use their own imagery and maybe suggest themselves that a sidewalk is present. So yes, the testing has gone on, but we don't have any great solution because obviously there are a lot of obstacles that need solving first. I think it would have been a great opportunity to come here to Buenos Aires because you have a very diverse um, sidewalks, depending on where you are, in, even inside the city, in the most uh, touristic zones and the, the most, um, yes, in, in the middle where the Olisco is and everything, you, you have lots of things, trash cans and everything is um, tidy and everything, but you go to other places and maybe you have these trees problems or different tiling with different patterns and colors, or you have, um, no, not a really good distinction between the sidewalk and the street because it's not painted any color like the line. So it would have been nice. Yeah. It sucks. It's, <laughs> it's a really great place to test and it's, it's great to have more imagery from users there that helps do it too. Um, so I, I've not captured in Buenos Aires, uh, another colleague of mine did a few years ago. But also places like, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time in Tbilisi, Georgia, and discussed detecting potholes with someone there. And we thought that we might uh, overload a computer if we were able to detect them in those roads, because <laughs> it would be a lot of processing and more than expected. So there's certainly a lot of variety, but great yes. imagery contributed by users really helps to actually uh, improve the ability to do something with the imagery and create map data. We have more questions. Um, is the AI differentiating cycle lanes and walkways? Yes, we do have a cycle lane category uh, and it generally focuses more on finding the painted lines. So I can't say that I know the performance level of it, but uh, generally there is a differentiation and it's probably likely that a cycleway will not be misclassified as a walkway. Uh, it'll probably just be very conservative in estimating whether or not it's a walk or a footway or a walkway. Thank you. Um, do you also save the width of the pedestrian way? We don't suggest the width to the user right now. Uh, it's something that we're looking at is, is using the actual 3D scene reconstruction to, to know a polygon that represents the sidewalk. But because of the, um, really just because of the variety of imagery and camera types, we can't say consistently how wide a sidewalk really is. And probably with our 3D scenes, it will look very different, even two meters apart. So it's something we may be able to actually provide a suggestion on, but it's really hard to, uh, to give it actually as a certain number as if we had gone out and measured it and so we'd actually rely probably on open data that may actually provide that attribute. Okay, thanks. Uh, any special consideration if there are a lot of on-street parkings affecting the image segmentation process? And generally the, the on-street parking, so we'd call this occlusion in the, the computer vision sense and 
it means if there's a sidewalk behind parked cars, we just won't see it. So if the only imagery we have is from cars, then we may not detect a sidewalk on that road at all. Now, that's why a lot of the most valuable imagery for generating sidewalk data is actually coming from bicycles and from pedestrians. So what I recommend if in the future when this is widely available, you want to help generate more sidewalk data, uh, I would recommend using the camera while walking on the sidewalk or at least in a bicycle lane, uh, which helps you map more quickly. And also sometimes the, the cameras, like especially a 360 camera, you can elevate it enough above either a car or a bicycle that it sees over the parked vehicles. And that can be really helpful too. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's definitely an obvious limitation. If something is blocking the sidewalk, then the, the machine just can't know it's there. Of course. Um, what does it look like in JOSM? Can you give some detail about your algorithm for polygon center line? Uh, so in JOSM, it's, it looks really a lot like the, the map with AI plugin already, just with an extra layer. So I think there is some work being done on that, but I haven't heavily tested it, so can't speak to it as much. And for the, the center line of the polygons, so I, I was trying a lot of things, and I, I know there's actually an established algorithm that I can use that works for roads. Uh, the problem is I, I wasn't sure if the road one will work as well for sidewalks, but the way I was doing it generally is I was creating a buffer on the road and making sure that that buffer polygon on the road was eight meters to the left and right. And then I was trying to take that actual boundary line and, and use that as the, uh, as the center line for a sidewalk polygon. So I would try to make sure that that line falls within uh, generally some kind of less rectangular uh, buffer around the clustered sidewalk node points. So really I was just using the edges of that rectangular buffer and trying to make sure they intersect generally a, a, an aggregated kind of oddly shaped polygon that was, a, I guess we would say probably a convex hole of the sidewalk nodes. So that was the simplest way to do it. And I'm working on some more advanced things that will uh, reduce duplication and make sure it has very clean geometry and ideally represent the real sidewalk geometry less than something that's just parallel to the road. OK, thank you very much for all your answers for your presentation. Um, I think here we have another question, but it, it was just answered before, like you are answering it and they, they posted the question. It says, do you also say the width of the pedestrian way less than two meters is not probably bike lane and it could be used for categorization, but it was the, the camera thing, right? Yeah, I would just add that, you know, like things like estimating the width, um, if we do generate a, a consistent polygon for each sidewalk, then it'd be really good to It'd be really easy to just say that, hey, we estimate this is, you know, for example, two or three meters wide. But at the same time, another useful thing is, uh, you know, it's, it's possible that maybe you could suggest in the future something like the actual material of the sidewalk. But I would say that with both the width and the material and other attributes, like just knowing, um, I know incline is one of the attributes you sometimes see, uh, other things like maybe just characteristics that you can derive from the image as the user. Um, I'd suggest that people pay attention to what they can see in the image and add to the sidewalk data, aside from just the geometry that we might suggest, but also of course, send recommendations and, and feature requests to us. If you think of something that might be automated actually from the image, and it's really good for us to consider how we can make that mapping easier and more specific. So, so knowing the sidewalk is made from concrete and two meters wide, for example, would be really interesting to consider automating. Um, but just knowing whether or not it's possible is something worth testing too. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, we need to wrap it here. 
but it has been a pleasure. And now I would like to invite everyone to the Malena Liebman room where the annual general meeting 2021 is going to have place like in just a couple minutes. So see everyone there and have a nice end of the week. Thank you. See you. See you. Bye.